So what is STEMI? It's basically an acute thrombotic occlusion of a coronary artery. Because it develops so rapidly, there is no time for compensation. And unless blood flow is restored, there's going to be progressive myocardial damage. So the key point to remember, which is why there is all the urgency surrounding an acute coronary syndrome, is that in a STEMI, time is myocardial. And the goal is therefore to reperfuse or open up that occlusion. Later, the delay in diagnosis and in restoring blood flow, the worst is going to be the first hour function has therefore been termed the golden hour because that's when you can intervene with maximal benefit to the patient. So what are some of the immediate measures which you can take if you suspect a ST elevation MI? Some very simple. Number one is to give a simple antiplatelet, aspirin. And one small but important pointer is to say that you should use plain and not aspirin, which should be chewed and swallowed by the patient so that the effect is prompt in the blood circulation. Second thing which can be done on a practical basis is to give sublingual nitroglycerin. Now, there are, of course, certain contraindications to uh, some of these medications. But again, you know, these are general pointers. So when you give sublingual nitroglycerin, you can help relieve the coronary, uh, uh, can help relieve the symptoms to some extent. And it can also be diagnostically useful if it provides some kind of partial relief of the pain in that it kind of tells you that, yes, this is more likely to be anginal pain. Then the key thing is prompt ECG and appropriate referral. And I would like to emphasize that if you have a high suspicion of acute coronary syndrome or STEMI, you should not wait. You should proceed promptly with the relevant steps and prompt referral as required. And the reason for this is that reperfusion is the cornerstone of STEMI therapy. The shorter the time to reperfusion, the lower the mortality. You're going to make a direct impact to the patient's life. And what are the reperfusion modalities which are available? Classically, thrombolysis was the reperfusion modality which was available. Now this has been increasingly supplanted by the primary angioplasty or primary PTCA. Some of you may be aware as to what is thrombolysis. It's nothing but pharmacological dissolution of the fibrin clot, which is occluding the coronary artery. And you want to recanalize the occluded vessel by kind of dissolving the clot, which is blocking it. Thrombolysis especially has the greatest benefit if administered in the first two, one to two hours after onset of a myocardial infarction. It clearly reduces mortality. The main concern when a thrombolysis is administered is because it's a fibrin dissolving medication there is a potential risk of bleeding. And this is what we mainly take into consideration when deciding whether to go ahead with thrombolysis or not. The second modality, which is considered the treatment of choice whenever possible for STEMI is the primary angioplasty or primary PTCA, as it is called. Here, you need a little more advanced facility. You need a cath lab with um, uh, coronary angiographic facilities and the ability to perform an angioplasty. And here, you basically directly access the vessel, the coronary artery, which has been occluded. You open it up with a balloon, and you typically deploy a stent so that under vision, you have opened up and restored blood flow. And you can uh, biologically see that this is clearly going to be a superior modality as compared to thrombolysis for reestablishing blood flow. The decision on one versus other will depend on a host of factors, including the availability of the facility, how early or late the patient is presented, and the patient's risk profile, and so forth. So again, to kind of re-emphasize the importance given to early diagnosis and management in a situation of STEMI, international standards for STEMI management dictate that for a good management, if you're doing thrombolysis, the door to needle time, the time from when the patient presents to actually starting the thrombolysis should be 30 minutes or less. Similarly, if a primary angioplasty is done, from the time of presentation to the actual inflation of balloon inside the coronary artery, the time should be no more than 90 minutes.